This is the 17th of September, and we now know that the Alberta acute care system is in crisis. Hospitals are system basically collapsing, surgeries are canceled. It is a madhouse there. And so the question is how we got there. Well, one of the ways is the government has admitted that it had faulty, its own modeling was faulty. We now know that they had access a month ago to more accurate modeling, which showed uh, that this scenario was, was very likely. And so the question arises, why didn't they take the most cautious, conservative uh, scenario and base their practices on that instead of taking the most optimistic, most risky one and which you know landed the province where it is now. So I'm gonna to talk to uh, Professor Lorian Hardcastle of Faculty of Law at the University of Calgary about that decision. So welcome to the interview, Lorian. Thank you for having me. Well, I kind of laid it out what the what the issue is and what decision appears to have been made based, you know, are we gonna pick, pick this model scenario or that model scenario? You know, what's your take on that, on the decision that Alberta Health, Dr. Dina Hinshaw and the Premier made? Well, I think there were a number of problematic assumptions in the model that, that they were using that have since come to light. And, and in fact, they've had trouble justifying their own model when they were called upon to provide the, the evidence. Um, they took a long time to get that evidence to us. And when they did, it was quite thin. And I think that given that there were competing models and given that we were seeing concerns arise with uh, the Delta variant and with pediatric cases in the US, there were a number of, of signs that pointed us towards a more cautious approach rather than a, an approach that would see us abandoning very basic public health measures like testing, tracing, and isolating. I think it's fair to say that um, citizens of any government expect their, their representatives uh, to uh, take robust planning uh, procedures, uh, you know, use the best models, the, the, you know, do the best to protect their citizens. And here it seems like, well, you can argue that, you know, politics played a role in this because the premier was absolutely determined that we'd have the best summer ever and uh, it would be the end of the pandemic. And it seems like this process has been fraught with error and miscalculation for months now. Yeah, I share those concerns that this process has been at times more about the politics than about the public health. I think it's telling that at times you've had large groups of doctors and other scientists uh, in the province calling for a more cautious approach and the government pressing ahead with its plan to reopen or to its reluctance to impose measures. And I think that the trade-off hasn't paid off. I think that Ken, Premier Kenny announced that we were open for summer. Um, once you've announced that and once you say things like, we will never have a vaccine passport, it becomes really hard to then go back on those statements when, when the condition that the province is in uh, warrants going back on those statements. Uh, you know, uh, part of preparing for the, the the interviews that I'm doing now, including this one, was going back and, and looking at some of the press conferences that Dr. Hinshaw and Premier Kenny did, where they asked, they answered questions about this. And, you know, I wouldn't say that they were evasive, but I wouldn't say they were fulsome answers either. You know, it was like, well, yeah, we had this model and we were consulting with, you know, colleagues in other provinces and blah, blah, blah. And then that's why we made this decision. Oh, and it turned out we were all wrong but hey, you know, mistakes happen. That seems, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a provincial government conduct itself that way. This seems to me to be very unusual process and the communication with the, with the public about that process. I would agree. I think that certainly when we're trying to make predictions about a pandemic, we don't always get things right. We saw the federal government make a miscalculation around masks at the beginning of the pandemic, but they were they were forthcoming and they were very transparent about how and why that, that error was made. I think in this case, what we've seen is maybe some admission that they got it wrong, but also a lot of defensiveness. And when called upon to provide the evidence for, for their approach, that what we received was a couple of pages of um, evidence that, that just wouldn't stand up to any level of, of scientific rigor. 
And so the, the transparency has been a huge concern, especially when coupled with the fact that government officials were largely unavailable for uh, press conferences and, and to answer to the public as, as the rates of Delta skyrocketed in Alberta. Now, you're a law professor, Lorian, and is this a, a crisis uh, precipitated by the government where the, the citizens only have recourse at the ballot box? Or are, you know, is there a way that citizens can hold their government accountable and people like Dr. Hinshaw? It's fairly difficult to hold government officials or the government legally accountable. Uh, for example, in negligence claims, you're, you're fairly limited to where there's been bad faith and, and there are certain immunities in the Public Health Act. Um, what we have seen though is last week, there was a, a filing in the court where they're, they're challenging the judicial review. They want the courts to review the uh, public health orders of, of Dr. Hinshaw, a few of the past public health orders to see if, if those orders were, were reasonable and met the scrutiny that, that we would expect of them. So there are some court processes in place, um, but it, it is hard to get the government on the hook for policy in action. Well, I'd have to say, and I guess we'll follow those court cases with, with great interest, but you mentioned that unless there's bad faith, involved. But it seems to me that there might be a pretty good argument here that the government was not acting in good faith, uh, you know, in, in the way it conducted, in conducted itself. There may be, and, and we don't have a lot of legal definition on what bad faith from government looks like. Most of the bad faith cases involve corporate defendants. So it's difficult to know what a, what a court would do with that. There was some litigation following SARS and individuals had sued the Ontario government and the courts were quite reluctant to let those cases go ahead because they were concerned with unlimited liability, uh, the potential scope of the government's liability to the various people who had contracted the disease. And they were concerned about uh, that the government has a complex task of balancing economic, social, political, health concerns, and the courts are reluctant to interfere in the, po the policy choices of elected officials. So, so those court cases are certainly an, an uphill battle, but I think they're important because other than an election, in many ways, the courts are really the main mechanism that we have to hold governments to account. Any final thoughts on the COVID-19 crisis in Alberta? Well, I think that where we find ourselves right now, the, the concern that I have is that we had a long period of inaction from this government and over the past few days, they've put some new measures in place. My worry with those measures is, is twofold. First, that they came too late and that we, we will see some effect from those measures in a week or two, but that our hospitals are already at a crisis point. And then secondly, that those measures have, they're so complex and there's so many exceptions and they're so difficult to understand that I think that's going to undermine both compliance and enforcement efforts. So I'm, I'm happy that they imposed some measures, but I would have liked to have seen more. And I think our, our healthcare system needed more at this point. Well, Lorian, uh, stay safe. Uh, Thank I, I you. Dr. Joe Vipen uh, this morning, and he said he wouldn't even go out in a public uh, event uh, because of Delta variant is so uh, transmissible. So stay safe and uh, thank you very much for your insights. Thank you for having me.